Believe it or not, when I was younger, I was a mean girl. Now don't get me wrong, I wasn't a flat out bully, but especially in a school environment, another side of me came out. From constantly talking bad about my classmates, intentionally excluding girls from my friend group, and overall just lying and manipulating for self gain. My moral compass was astray, and I had no sense of what was right or wrong. Through elementary school, I continued to take poor actions. Of course, consequences stumbled my way, but I always managed to turn the blame on anyone but myself, until fifth grade. On the heels of a prank gone wrong, I found myself starting my summer before sixth grade in the police station, being interviewed by a detective for a prank call my best friend and I had made. It was the first time in my life I couldn't lie out of a situation. I remember feeling so embarrassed on the drive back home, ashamed that my parents knew everything I had done and knowing how disappointed they were. Better yet, my best friend and her family bore none of the blame and deemed me as the instigator. My parents could have easily excused my behavior and forgotten the incident even occurred, but they didn't. Despite my reluctance, they forced me to go to the kids' house I had prank called and apologize to them and their family. Over the course of the summer, I visited their family to spend quality time with them multiple times. Although initially it was uncomfortable, my parents told me it was making amends, not just through words and apology, but through actions. It was just a prank call, but it, was, but it changed the course of my life. It was the defining moment where I decided I didn't want to be mean anymore. In life, everyone is bound to make mistakes. We hurt people, we lie. We get jealous and self-righteous. We get prideful and stubborn and mean. Missteps are inevitable but I believe it is what we do to make our wrongs right that defines our character. I used to think life would be easier if I turned a blind eye to my character defects. I didn't care to know how selfish, insecure, and judgmental I was. But ever since fifth grade, I've tried to live a life of honest self-accountability, seeking what I could have done better in every situation. I'm far from perfect, but I know that gossiping is wrong and reflects individual insecurity. And to escape it, it really is just as simple as walking away or speaking up. The rambunctious, manipulative, and lost elementary schooler is still in me at times. If I could tell her anything, it would be to use her passion for good. Use it to be of service to someone. Ask them a question. Show them your undivided attention. Stop talking and start listening because learning lessons are all around you. You aren't perfect, so stop expecting yourself to be. Your imperfections create conflict, and how you respond determines who you are. I wasn't always nice, but today my kindness is a part of my identity. Finally, I'd like to close with a quote that resonates with me. With a bit of effort, you can smile at someone today, even if you're frowning inside. Both of you will be better for it. Any difficulty you meet today offers you a chance for even greater happiness. It guarantees your growth. Thank you. Shout out. Thank you to all the teachers I have had at RHP. All of you have been so passionate about what you teach and genuinely interested in the well-being of your students. Mr. Jackson, thank you for being my advisor these past two years. You have been nothing but supportive to me and always there when I needed anything. Coach Mo, even though it's only been two years since I've known you, it feels like a lifetime. Stepping in as head coach for girls basketball last minute was not an easy task, but you faced it with excitement. You have the biggest heart I know and have always believed in me even when I didn't believe in myself. I don't know what I'll do without you in college, but I will always remember your kind words. Sasha, my brisket. It really was fate that brought us together. It seems like forever ago we were in kindergarten at El Marino. Who would have thought we would be spending senior year together as teammates? I've always admired your rare quality where you can make anyone you talk to feel comfortable and special. Don't ever change that. Sophia, our deep C block conversations have been one of the highlights of my senior year. Although we may not always see eye to eye, I believe our differences are what brings us closer together. This may sound corny, but you really are a light in my life. You are accepting and funny and radiate an honest and optimistic energy. I can't believe you're going all the way to Michigan. Have fun in the cold, I will miss you a lot. Tatum, 
I wouldn't have even come to RHP if it weren't for you. You are the best teammate I have ever had. Not only a driven leader on the court, but a selfless friend. You have always been so strong, even through serious struggles, and you constantly seek what you can do for others. I know you'll do great things at San Marcos. Remember not to let stuff bottle up and open up that big heart of yours. Gabby, there aren't enough words to describe you. You are funny, caring, compassionate, bright, and a little crazy at times. But at your core, you are kind. You make me want to be a better person who sees the best in every situation. In college, take that special light and love of yours out into the world every day and never hide who you are. Bella, <laughs> being your best friend for the past seven years has been such a gift. There is no one I feel more comfortable with than you. Our friendship has been tested many times, but we have both come out on the other side more mature and closer than ever. When I'm with you, I don't fear the future or dwell on the past. I can be truly in the moment knowing that everything will be okay. As we move on to the next chapter of our lives, I know things won't be the same, but maybe different is good. We will come back with new experiences and life lessons, and our hearts will be bigger than ever, waiting to fill the space with a deeper friendship. I love you so much. Mom, you are the wisest woman I know. Whenever I have a problem, I know I can come to you for unbiased and moral advice. I know everyone says this about their mom, but you really are the best mom ever. You taught me the importance of being present around the people who matter most. I couldn't even tell you how many things you've taught me about life. You are an amazing mom, dedicated wife, and a talented hard rock drummer. I don't feel ready to leave you in college, but I know I will never feel ready. I love you, mom. Kiko, I have always believed that my life was and would always be centralized around one person, you. You are my person, my sister. There is no one I admire and love more than you. As we have grown up, our relationship has evolved. And although not every step was perfect, everything happened for a reason to get us to where we are today. I am so proud of the person you have become. You have had, you have had this light in you ever since you were born. And no matter how you get your message to the world, through songs or books or screenwriting or acting, I know you will change the world. I love you. You will forever be the kitty to my curd. Dad, you are my best friend. Whenever something happens in life, you are the first person I want to talk to. Whether it's a shoulder to cry on, or a listening ear, or a friend to laugh with, you are the person I want by my side. You have supported me in whatever I pursue, and loved me through and through. I would do anything for you, Dad. And I know one day, you're gonna get a high school coaching job and run the best program ever, because you have already touched so many lives. And there is nothing I am more proud of than to be able to call you my dad. Thank you.